Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy Birch and I'm a PhD student from King's College London and the principal author of the study. The other authors are Soterios Nausias, Lyndon Lacruz, Coel Rode and Christos Bergelis. This work in progress study showcases the work done so far on the project to estimate the surgical instrument remote center of motion and the localization of the trocar for vitreoretinal surgery. Today, I'll be outlining the work done so far specifically for the remote center of motion estimation part of the project. Here, we investigated the use of a state-of-the-art RCM estimation algorithm for its specific use in vitreoretinal surgery and developed a customized calibration procedure for the setup. Firstly, let me explain what vitreoretinal surgery is. This kind of surgery consists of the procedures where the surgeon has to treat problems at the back of the eye, including the retina, the macula, and the vitreous fluid. So you can picture this a bit better. There's a diagram on the slide of how the surgery looks like inside the eye. To reach the area of interest, the surgeon has to insert surgical instruments through the eye. A trocar, which acts as an access port to the interior of the eye, is inserted into the eye at the safe location termed the pars plana, whilst providing strain relief from the movement of the surgical instrument that would otherwise cause ocular trauma. In recent decades, the development of robot-assisted vitreoretinal surgery has become more prevalent. Benefits of this include the increase of precision and accuracy, consistency, hand tremor removal, faster patient recovery times due to reduced trauma, and the targeted delivery of new regenerative therapies. For precise control of these instruments, an accurate knowledge of the surgical instrument's remote center of motion, or RCM, is required. For most of the surgery, the RCM must align with the trocar, which is used as a pivoting point to ensure that no damaging lateral forces are exerted on the eye. In certain situations, where the surgeon might want a different view of the retina, which he is observing through a microscope located above the surgical wor workspace, he will need to slightly roll the eye by coordinating the movement of the surgical tool. The very small and precise movements that require an accurate knowledge of both the RCM and the trocar location. Surgical robotic systems can be categorized in the way they align the RCM with the trocar. They can be mechanical RCM systems, virtual RCM systems, or passive wrist RCM systems. Mechanical RCM systems are built so that the RCM is physically constrained and therefore exactly known. During setup, the RCM is physically aligned with the trocar. Now, the issue is that to re relocate the RCM, the entire setup has to be repositioned, thus disrupting the surgical flow. For virtual RCM systems, the RCM is aligned with the trocar through a pre-operative calibration process. The control system ensures that the RCM constraint cannot be infringed during the procedure. The benefit of this is that if the trocar moves, providing it is tracked, the RCM can also be repositioned without changing the entire setup. The disadvantage is that the estimation is dependent on the accuracy of the sensors. Also, the calibration process can be complicated and time consuming. Now, the passive wrist RCM systems have a non-actuated wrist joint. This is ideal for core manipulation configurations where the surgeon holds the robotic instrument and has the freedom to move it similarly to manual surgery. The setup does not require an RCM troc to trocar calibration as the surgeon pivots the instrument about the trocar thus naturally aligning both positions. The RCM is then estimated using sensor set data. Due to the not actuated wrist joints, the instrument orientation is decoupled from the position of the end effector which is holding the instrument and different sensors are used for both. The main issue with this is that the orientation sensors are normally noisy thus injecting errors into the estimation. Due to the precision required to invert retinal surgery and to ensure the safety of the patients, if robots using either the virtual or the passive wrist RCM configurations are to be used, they require a method for real-time RCM estimation that is robust against noise. 
These two types of configurations are the ones that we have focused on for the study. The sensor system used to estimate RCM can be broken down into three types. Visual systems, forest sensing systems, or using kinematic data from the robot. Here's an example for each. In the first picture, Wilson et al. Used, uses two external cameras that view the surgical workspace to track the instrument pose. It draws a line going through the instrument axis, and then using optimization methods, the best point of intersection of these lines is calculated. However, medical staff or equipment can occlude the view of the instrument. Additionally, registration between the cameras and the robot is required, incorporating errors in the RCM estimation. The second picture shows an example of using force sensors to measure the forces at the instrument to trocar interface. This way, the RCM can be estimated using the correlation between the RCM to trocar distance and the forces exerted at the trocar. The larger the forces, the greater the misalignment. However, force sensors are expensive, noisy, and prone to drift. The third picture shows the use of robot kinematic data to estimate the RCM position. Normally using these kind of methods, the intersection points between consecutive instrument axes are found and the distances minimized between all the recorded poses. The issue is that these methods do not factor in the use of different sensors for the instrument position and orientation, as found in passive wrist RCM systems. Noisy orientation sensors produce greater estimation errors. To overcome this, Gruch Thuchsen et al. designed an extended Kalman filter, or EKF, that takes measurement noise into account, making it one of the more robust methods of RCM estimation. For this reason, our study investigates whether the state-of-the-art method is precise enough for use in vitro retinal surgery. Now, due to time, I'll not go into much of the EKF detail, but you can find out more about it by reading the paper I have referenced at the bottom of the slide. Just to quickly give you an overview of it, this EKF uses two sensor measurements, the instrument's position and orientation, to estimate the RCM position. It does this by using the measurement model shown on the slide. The measurement vector ZK on the left is the compilation of the measurements directly taken from the sensor. This equals the measurement model shown in the box brackets on the right hand side. Three first components of the vector are the instrument's 3D position, which is directly equal to the sensor measurements, so it does not change. The last two vector components equal the orientation angles, described as the altitude azimuth angle pair. To calculate these angles, the equations shown are used, d being the distance between the RCM position and the sensor position, so f minus p. The sensor position is known, but the RCM position is the unknown. We know the desired results of the equations, which are the angles taken from the sensor measurements, so during runtime, the values for the RCM positions that are required to attain these angles are calculated, with the certainty of the value increasing over time. Effectively, the error is being minimized between the prediction of the angles utilizing the estimated RCM positions and the sensor measurements. With all of this in mind, an instrumented tool was developed to be considered for use in both manual procedures and robot-assisted vitreretinal surgery, specifically for virtual RCM and passive wrist RCM configurations. The proposed system is clamped onto a surgical instrument, in this case the Alcan surgical forceps, with an electromagnetic or EM sensor incorporated in it. The EM tracking system used was the Aurora from NDI. The EM sensor was used to track the instrument's pose, which was then used together with the extended common filter to estimate the instrument's RCM. Two micro cameras were also incorporated to ultimately allow for the visual stereo detection and tracking of the trocar position. This specific aspect would also be useful for mechanical RCM systems, but it will be developed in future work. To collect the RCM ground truth whilst performing the tests, two EM probes were placed in the bespoke 3D printed part together with the trocar, as shown in the picture. One EM probe is placed horizontally and the other vertically to the trocar. Knowing the geometry of the printed part, the location of the trocar was calculated. A customized calibration procedure was developed based on the work from Lahanas et al. 
This would find the relative transformation of the EM probe's pose to the forceps shaft. The forceps was rolled about the static point using a bespoke setup, making the probe move in a circular path. A circle was then fitted to the data, with the center point being the location of the relative probe point on the forceps shaft. The normal to the circle in the direction of the point of rotation represents the forceps direction vector, which would always be constant for all probe measurements. Finding the transformation matrix between a single sensor measurement and the pose of its relative point on the forceps shaft gave the calibration parameters. Due to the measurement noise, sensitivity of the sensor and slight inconsistencies in the setup, it was impossible to obtain a perfect circle in a single plane. This meant that the calibration parameters were inconsistent between tests or even between two sensors attached close to each other on the forceps. To overcome these issues, two steps were added to the procedure. First, instead of using a single sensor measurement to calculate the calibration parameters, the medium of the parameters calculated from all the closest points to the fitted circle within 0.1 millimeters of it was used. Second, the forceps rotated nine times instead of just a single time. This improved the consistency of the calibration parameters. Using the previously shown setup, 12 tests were performed of 1 minute each, where the forceps was pivoted around the trocar. The first figure is a box plot of the error of the EKF results compared to the ground truth in the X, Y and Z axis. The second figure is the EKF output error in Cartesian distance over time for one of the tests with the error axis broken up to improve visualization of the plot. As can be seen in the box plot, the error in the x axis ranged from minus 4.1 to 3.3 millimeters, given a range of 7.4 millimeters. Although this is the largest this is a large spread, the deviation is primarily due to two of the points. The other 10 values would give a range of 4.8 millimeters the 25th percentile of the entire data set being at minus 1.5 millimeters and the 75th percentile at 2.75 millimeters. The range of the y and z axis values were 2.3 and 2.2 millimeters respectively, therefore being more consistent. Looking at the median error of each axis, the z axis is the largest, having a median of minus 3.5 millimeters, compared to the minus 0.2 millimeters and 1.8 millimeters of the x and y axis, respectively. It is not clear what may have caused the error of all the inconsistencies between the x values. Some of the error may have been caused by the horizontal ground truth sensor not being perfectly aligned, neither perpendicular to the trocar, which would mostly affect the z and y-axis. A similar issue with the vertical ground truth sensor could account for some of the error in the x-axis, but is very unlikely to account for all of it. Another possibility could be the small flexion of the forceps shaft during pivoting, which is very thin and can be easily bent when being handled by an inexperienced user. Flexion would cause errors in the RCM estimation, which only considers a rigid body pivoting about a static point. The trucker was has a diameter of 2.7 millimeters. Therefore, an acceptable error would be plus minus 1.4 millimeters from the ground truth, which is equivalent to the trocar's radius. Overall, this method gives promising results, estimating the RCM position very close to the error margin. Future work will ensure that the majority of the error is within the margin and limit its maximum attained value. With this in mind, a further refinement step could be applied to the EKF using sensor fusion, leveraging the visual information provided by the micro cameras mounted on the forceps. In conclusion, the study details the development of an instrumented vitreoretinal surgery tool that can be used both for manual or robot assisted surgery. A state of the art kinematic data RCM estimation method was tested to see whether it was accurate enough for this application. A customized calibration procedure was also developed to register the EM probe to the forceps shaft. The results from the test were promising, but would still need further refinement to be within the desired 1.4 mm error margin. Future work will consist of visual localization and tracking of the trocar. Also, the use of the micro cameras to improve the accuracy of the RCM estimation will be explored. Thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to answering your questions.